So today we're going to talk about Thanksgiving praise and worship. So the first thing I want to talk about is um, there's an order, you know, in a kingdom where there's a king, the king rules and his laws are in, in our kingdom. The Bible is his law and they make a decree. A decree is something that is written, which is a law. And he decrees it. And if the king decrees something. You it's it's law. It's it's just it's done. I mean, you don't you can't change a king's decree or a king's law. And we are kings and priests. He's he's training us to work inside his kingdom. So the first thing right out of the gate here is there's an order with thanksgiving and praise. And we see it in Psalms 104, 100 verse 4. Remember, simple. Don't make, this is simple, but y'all simple right now is not, that's all you need. He doesn't want you AI, in, in, I'm, a, I'm not against AI. I, I'm not that person that, I, there's a lot of good with it. Yes, the devil's probably coming in on that, just like everything else. But what I'm saying is, is that artificial intelligence has increased our learning so much that it, it can make you tired. Like you could just like so much. He's saying, just keep it simple. Do what I tell you to do. If I tell you to take that class, take it. If I tell you to read this book, read it. If I tell you to uh, listen to that person, listen. Other than that, you don't you don't need to go listen to 700 things because it becomes a distraction. This right here tells you simply how to get into the presence of the Lord. Okay. Enter my courts with thank. Let me read it exactly. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Okay. So a gate is something that opens and closes. You get access into the kingdom of God with thanksgiving. So if you're grumbling and complaining, guess what, guess what happens? <coughs> or whose kingdom are you in? Okay. He doesn't say when you grumble, you can come into my court. No, he said, enter with thanksgiving. Tell me, find something, just the very breath. If that's all you got today, give me something to work with here. And listen, God has kingdom principles. We're going to see that it's not about, he's telling us to do this. So many people, when I was trained up as a little girl, I was thinking it was just these rules and you better do them right. He said, this is how, remember perspective is everything. Hey baby, listen, listen, sweetie. It's a kingdom principle. It's called the law of reciprocity. This is what the world calls it. Okay, where I call it give and it's given back. Okay, you can call it whatever you want. I tell you, you do this and I'll do that. But what I, it's a secret. It's, it's, it's a kingdom law. Give and then like a boomerang effect, it comes back to you. So, and then it comes back to you. It's better to give. Okay, get this little thing. It's better to give than receive. Now, I didn't tell you don't receive. I said, it's better to start the boomerang by you giving first because then by the same measure, it comes back. Or even greater, because that's my law, that one seed might bring an orchard of apples, but you got to plant the seed. So you got to praise me. You got to give me thanksgiving. You got to be focused on who I am. And then I become your God. Then it comes back on you. It's a kingdom principle. So he's not saying you're doing it wrong if you don't do this. It's not the way he's saying it. Perspective is everything. How you see, he's given us a kingdom secret. Hey, when you first come in or just throughout the day, just AA even has it. The world has it. A gratitude list before you go to bed at night. Write a list you're thankful for. I mean, the world's getting it. I just say, Christians, we need to be like up in our game in that. Walk around. Thank you, Jesus, for the breath. I can look around. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for my Bible. Thank you for this grass that I can go ground in. Thank you have food in my refrigerator. Like really, like just start calling. Thank you have a chair to sit in. Just whatever it is, thank him, okay? Because that opens the gate, but then we're not even in yet. Now, there's a picture here. There's the temple, you know, that you're outside of the courts. That's where your sin offering is. That's where you receive Jesus as a sinner. You don't have to go back to that, okay? Because once saved, always saved, unless you decide you're not. He's not going to renege. You're going to make that decision. You don't want to be saved, okay? Okay. He's going to, if you bow your knee to him and then you start following the Lord, you will not lose your salvation unless you choose to lose it. Okay. It's not about, I love to clarify that because it's like, he's not going to yank your salvation away from you. You get to choose. I don't want to serve you. I don't believe in you again, whatever you decide. Okay. So you can just settle that. You get to decide if he's your Lord and your savior. All right. He wants everybody to be all his children. That's what his heart is. 
He doesn't want to chip you up and try to throw you out. That's not God. So then it says, you enter his courts with thanksgiving and his gates with thanksgiving and his courts. Now the courts is where he is. Okay, you, the gates are the outer. He's, you're not to him yet. Just thanksgiving is first. But then you got to praise his name. Because what this does, again, it's not like you praise me because I'm God. Although he can say that because he's God. But what he's saying is, things happen in the spirit realm when you praise me. It says, he's my God. And so I become responsible for you. There's a kingdom law that when you're my subject and I'm your king, and you, with your own mouth, you see here, you got to say it. You can't just think it. You can't just, you got to say it. You got to get bold. You got to be willing to be a fool for the yeah. Lord. These, I just, okay, now I'm going to rant to the churches that want to sit like this here in worship. Or put their hands in their pocket because they may want to lift their hand up and praise mm -hmm. the Lord. Or they don't want to sing loud because they may get too loud and sounding stupid. <laughs> well, you will have to break that during these days if you want to go to another level. If you're not willing to get radically, be a radical fool for the Lord, dance around like David did. Mm -hmm. Let your wife, your husband, your children roll their eyes at you, but your God say, I see you, baby. I see you dancing for me. Now, I'm not saying you got to go out and act a fool. Okay, I'm not saying that. But I'm just saying that when you resist worship until you're God, I just want to say, as the coaching part, Get a piece of paper out and find out what are your, where is that resistance? What's that resistance about? What's the message? What's the resistance about? Now, like I said, sometimes just reverence is a good thing. You don't need to be hooping and hollering when the pastor's delivering a word. Like we're, there's, there's etiquette, okay? But you know your heart posture before the Lord. If, are you willing to get on your knees and your nose prostrate before the Lord in your private chambers? Are you willing to go to the altar and raise your hands if he tells you to. I mean, I'm not sure what he's going to do with any of you. But I'm just saying this season more than ever, wherever you are, this may be speaking to you. That sometimes that resistance to go boldly into the throne, to, to praise him, is what's keeping your life stuck. And when you break open that and you move into the courts. Because listen, when, when you've heard enough and you've met and tasted that he is good. Mm -hmm. I Look, I don't care who calls me fool. I just don't anymore. Call me what you want. They're going to call you that anyway. Call me what you want. As long as he does it. You know, as long as he's good. That's first. You know, that's first. And if my husband's not good or my children, not, they're all good. But when there was a time, I'd be, well, you need to take that to the Lord. You need to go on and just talk to the Lord. That's not about me. That's about you. You're embarrassed. You be embarrassed. But I'm not. You know, it's that provoking is good in our children, okay? It's good to, for your children to be provoked a little bit and roll their eyes at you. Because that's when the Lord can work on their heart. Okay, so, all right, so here we are. That's how you get in the very presence of the Lord. And so I know a lot of people are like, I can't hear him. I don't feel his presence. I don't, well, I'm just that, would I rewind this? Go listen to this and rewind this because that's how you can break it. When you're, when you're ready to just get, I, I, Lord, I, here I am. I'm just giving you everything I got. I don't even know what I don't, I, here, hello, Lord, here I am. Take me, use me, whatever. Make me something. In this blink of an eye. We just a blink of an eye. You know? Okay. And he inhabits the praises. He inhabits the praises of his people. Okay. Psalms 22.3. That, so there again. You see this praise word. We're, t we're learning these simple things. Praise. If you don't feel like you ever feel the presence of the Lord. Well maybe you need to just praise for about 30 days. Fast and praise for three days and you watch your life change. Because mm -hmm. you say, Lord, you said you inhabit the praises of your people. I'm your people and all I'm going to do is praise you all day. I'm going to sing worship songs. I'm going to praise you. I'm not <laughs> even going to talk to people that may say something negative. I'm just going to praise you. If I have to take three days vacation up in my house, I'm going to praise you. I mean, like you got to get radical about your relationship with God. That's the bottom line. He's telling you what to do. And if, you, if you're right now, if your spirit's sleeping about something, it's because that's what he's saying. Baby, come do that and watch. Get, give that peace to me. Unlock that peace for me. Change that thought for me. What, whatever it is, it's different for all of us. But I promise you, these words are anointed because they're his. And he's going to tell you specifically what it is you're to do in this season. Because he is a God that is drawing all of us to a higher place. There's verses, they, 
shout with a voice of triumph. Mm -hmm. Shout is not singing where nobody hears you. Okay. Maybe you need to practice it at home when nobody's there. Go for it. Practice it in your car. I love this saying. Whoever or whatever you worship becomes your king. Mm -hmm. Whatever you give your worship to, your adoration, your heart, your time becomes your king. And now more than ever, God said, I need your worship. I want your worship. I need your praise, your thanksgiving, and your worship. That's a shift that happens when you give God that. So we talked about Romans 5. 3. Okay, so I'm going to read a couple of these verses. And these are all in the notes. Um, because it's just, it's just so clear that this is like a first law of order. And so often, now just think about this. You don't have to, every prayer, don't get methodical because that's not God either. He wants you to be you, be you. But you have to have this awareness. Am I, am I just barging in and telling God, I need this, this, and this? You know, occasionally I do. I forget that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, Lord. So, Father, I just want to tell you how much I love you. You know, I, I, not every time. But think about this. This was the story. I was walking yesterday and he gave me this story and he, he attached it to my attached it to my son. You know, I raised my son alone. My daughter was always just a sweet spirit. But my son, if he was hungry, he was hangry. If he didn't have his way, I mean, he's just a sweetheart and he's oh, he's a good uh, he was a good he was such a good. Both my kids were amazing kids. But he would be I'm mean, using him because he could do this. So I might be cooking and he would drive up and he would come in the house and what if, he didn't do this all the time, I'm using this example so I could feel it, you know, what it felt like. What if say he drives up and he runs in the house and he said, he runs upstairs, drops his book sack at age 15 and never really even said anything to me as he walked in and I'm cooking his dinner. Well, I still would love him. I still would cook his dinner and in fact, I'd probably put it on a plate for him. And I, but what if my son came in the back door and he said, hey, mom, mom, you know what? I just need to tell you, you, thank you for cooking my dinner. I mean, you know, I was talking to my friend today and he never has a home cooked meal. I just want to thank you for that. I appreciate you, mom, for that. You are a good mom. Goes up, puts his book sacks, comes up down. Hey, are you going to, are we going to get to eat together? Or do you, are you, do you have a busy schedule this afternoon? Cause I'd love to eat together if you could. Now you just tell me the difference. Yeah. I'm still going to love him. I'm still going to feed him. I'm still going to probably make his plate. But golly, I'm going to want to do more. I'm going to lean into that relationship. I'm going to want to, like, how can, what can I do for you, son? What else you need? Like, that, it's no different with our father. But just the honor of being honored. You know, he's still, he's our father, but he's still God, the creator of the universe. Can we run in and just say, God, I need some help. I need you to fix this. Absolutely. Absolutely. And look, if you build a relationship on a bad day if my son ran in, but 90% of the time he approached me like that, it would mean nothing if he ran up to his room. I would probably run after him and say, hey, babe, what's going on? Is there anything I can do for you? Because I would know we have that bond. We have that established. That is not normal behavior. It's the same thing with our God. So don't get tripped up in a religious act. Oh, God, you know, I can't go to the throne unless I praise. And then I work. That's not, that's religion. These are kingdom <laughs> principles that when established through love and desire and built in a relationship will cause you to prosper. And that's the piece I want to kind of land in that uh, in, the, in my devotional, I said that worship will cause you to prosper. It will cause you to prosper for a number of reasons for the story I just told you that when he's just going to lean in, when you ask, it's because y'all have this sweet walk together. It's like he's doing life with you constantly. You're not detached from him. You don't have to spend all that time and energy. You're like doing life together. You're yoked under the same balance beam. And it becomes easy and you hear because you're doing life together. And you worship him because you love him. Because he's your God. Because he has shown up. Because you have a trust in him. Because now he's trusting you. You have this rapport with him. When I, right after COVID, we, um, like everybody, we stayed at home after, and you know, we're slow to move back into church. <laughs> we would do church at home. And one morning I told my husband, I said, hey, I'm going to run, get some cocoa and I'll be right back. 
when the word starts, when the pastor starts. They were in worship, singing. And I get in my car and I'm just driving to get my cocoa so I can get back and I can get my word, my bread of life, me, me, me. I could, and I'm just driving to the store and it's just, just clear. He goes, baby, worship is what you give me. And the word is what I give you. He inhales our worship and he exhales his glory. So I was missing a component. He wasn't, he wasn't spanking me. He's trying to train me like you're missing a component that's going to bring your life to another level. It's when we spend time together, instead of you just getting your word, your bread, like it's what you do for me. It's the law of rest. You worship me. And then I'm able to exhale my glory. You worship me. That's why we worship before the word is spoken to the, to the body. Because we're, it's a law of order in God's kingdom. <clears throat> and then I'm going to close with this. You could just go forever on all this. I mean, there's so many. I have so many scriptures that, are, that confirm what we're talking about here. But in Mark... I mean, I'm sorry, Matthew 14, 19. We're talking about kingdom. We're talking about prayer. We're talking about prospering. We're talking about positioning ourselves in the kingdom. God, Jesus being our king. He's the king of the kings, king of us. So Matthew 14, 19. And, and there again, you can't, it's not in every version. Some versions use the word bless. Some use thank. And so you have to read them all. You have to go deep. But this is a study I did one time. It's so revelatory. Matthew 14, 19 said, Jesus directed the people to sit down on the grass. Rest, sit down, give me your attention. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven. So Jesus is showing us how, what you do. You take what's in your hand, which is usually never enough because if it was, we wouldn't need him, okay? He wants to yoke with us, do life with us, for us to depend on him. You take what's in your hand, which is never enough, okay? It will be enough when it's in his kingdom, but what he's, it's, a, it's a principle of you take what's yours and let me add my super to your natural, okay? Because if you're thinking, I can do all this in my own account, your dream's not big enough because that's not God. God wants to do it with you. Okay. So you take that, and this is the key of how. We say, well, how do I get myself in the kingdom? How do I get myself in the kingdom? Well, you say, you're my king, and you're automatically transferred in, okay? But this is how you move your money, your Bible study, your marriage, whatever it is that you need, redeeming, addition, increase, multiplication. This is a picture of multiplication. So he takes the loaves and the fish, which is not enough, at all, and he lifts it up to his father, and he says, Father, I just want to thank you for this right here. Immediately, the blessing fell on it. The multiplication, the super became on the natural. That's how you transfer into the kingdom right there, is thankfulness unto God. Not just out there. Oh, I'm just thankful for this day. No, 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 no. I am thankful, Lord. Like, make sure you're making, like, give your attention to heaven, to God. I'm thankful, God, for this day, that, for this world you created. Like, it's not just I'm thankful for my things and my, no, that's still a little bit, like, the awareness here is unto God, unto God. So when he gave the loaves, and, okay, here's the next step. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the di disciples gave them to the people. The multiplication happened in the going with the faith. It wasn't like he got 7,000 baskets the minute he lifted it up. Because you could stop and say, well, I lifted it up to the Lord and I thanked him for it. Well, now you need to get out and go do something with it by faith. And watch the multiplication happen because it happens in the going. But what I really want you to see is the importance of thanksgiving is how you get into his courts with thanksgiving and praise. Open the gates. Then thanksgiving is so key. And then Romans 12, it says... That we're to have a living, worship is a living sacrifice. We, the true act of worship is in when your whole life, the way you live, is a picture of worship unto him. How you live, is, is, that's, that's a sweet smell unto the Lord. That is a sacrifice of praise, a living sacrifice. What you do with your body, how you treat your relationships, how you do life is your worship. Okay, y'all give some, um, I love all y'all's hearts, and y'all give me some comments, love them, I'll read them later, y'all have an awesome day.